Who is Sakura? The real Sakura? The Sakura we don't know. Well, okay guys, this deep dive is gonna be a little bit different. See, my background's pink to match the occasion. When I first started making Idol Deep Dive, there was a short list of idols that I knew I couldn't do full justice to in a less than 15 minute video. And guess who was topping that list? Let's just say this script's file name is Sakura Script Gulp. Miyawaki Sakura has been an idol since November 2011, or put bluntly, as long as Skyrim has been out. First as a member of HKT48, then a joint member of AKB48, then a contestant on Produce48 where she became a member of Eyes1, and now of course, La Seraphim. Half of her life has been on the stage. So no, I won't be able to say everything about her in this video. But that's fine. There's already a documentary on Sakura that goes way in depth on her journey, and another documentary, and a new one that just came out. You get the idea. Normally, I reflect on an idol's journey and find helpful insights based off of it, but Sakura has done so much self-reflecting already that I need only to wade knee-deep into the endless ocean of interviews she's done to find her core motivations, struggles, and life lessons. I mean, I've considered dedicating an entire section to just reading her quotes. So you know what? I will! The last three minutes of this video will just be a reading of some of my absolute favorite Sakura quotes. Not even joking. She's like the Dalai Lama of K-pop. Thank you, Miyawaki-sensei. Normally I give some big lowdown on how grand and significant an idol is during this bio screen, but I think you get the idea. Sakura's journey as an idol has never known any breaks. By design. We're about to find out where all that unstoppable drive and momentum came from. Ooh, you feel that excitement in the air? But like always, we need to set the stage. No better way than going all the way back to the very beginning. Miyawaki Sakura was born on March 19, 1998 in Kagoshima City, Kagoshima Prefecture, Japan. Her biological parents separated when she was only a year old, but she's had a tight relationship with her mom, stepfather, and little brother. Her parents were often busy with work, so she spent most of her time with her grandma, who, to this day, remains her number one supporter. Sakura did ballet when she was little, and in an attempt to break her out of her introverted shell, she was sent to a school for musical theater. Watching the musicals, she was enamored with the people who spent their careers singing and dancing on stage, and the desire to stand up there too welled up within her. So throughout elementary school, she continued theater, and kickstarted her gaming career with these little gadgets. However, she also dreamt of becoming a doctor. It was a decisive day in middle school, when her father told her about the auditions for a new girl group opening up, the Fukuoka branch of the popular AKB48. She decided then and there that if she was able to pass the auditions, she would become an idol, and if she failed, she'd become a doctor. Spoilers, she passed. Much to her surprise, actually. She really didn't feel skilled at singing or dancing at the time. And it was on October 23rd, 2011, she was revealed as a member of HKT48 to the world. She was only 13 years old at the time. I wish I could say that shockingly young, but I'm so desensitized to it at this point, I feel nothing. And here's where things get interesting. In the seven and a half years she spent actively in HKT48, and later AKB48, her fame was always on the rise. I'll save you from hearing all the J-pop jargon, but basically, she was the first ever HKT48 member to rank in the big Senbatsu elections where all the idols get a popularity placing based on votes. After a while, she was solidly in the Kami 7, or the top 7 members, for 4 years, and managed to work her way all the way to the number 3 spot in 2018. That's no easy feat. You could say she was already big stuff by the time Produce48 came around. So why? Well, unlike so many other idols, there wasn't one big moment of meteoric rise for Sakura's popularity. Not even her fight scenes or wrestling matches. It was the result of constant effort and willingness to learn over the course of her career. That's what made people want to root for her. At first, it was my competitiveness that made me want to climb higher. But as I've risen, I've discovered how interesting it is to learn more about the world. And when the world presents a challenge, that's when I start to feel exhilarated. It's like a fresh start, I'd say. Wondering what the world holds next, and how far I can go. Being an idol basically comes down to singing and dancing, right? But there's actually other things I'm better at, so I wouldn't say I chose to become an idol because it's what I'm good at. And yet, I believe that I can become a kind of idol that no one else can. I've certainly never seen another idol quite like me. She laughs, I'm not gonna try to imitate her laugh. Even some people who aren't fans are curious to see how far I'll go and how I'll live my life. 
Sakura embodied a core part of J-pop idol culture. It's not that you look for perfect idols to stan, it's that you look for the right, imperfect idols to root for and watch as they grow. Sakura's unassuming, introverted, but approachable image, guided by her drive for growth and competing, I guess, made her the perfect candidate to root for. Produce 48 in Eyes 1 then was a fitting next step for her. When Sakura craved to show the world more of what she could do, it provided the ultimate stage to prove that her lack of proper K-pop training couldn't hold her back, and she would rise past that with her own hard work. <laughs> In this way, Produce 48 and the Eyes One era as a whole was a showcase of Sakura's appeal to a new audience. Her unstoppable determination and willingness to challenge herself was now showcased on the Korean and global stages. But it's not easy to choose such a grand path. Striving to get better means encountering your shortcomings, in this case, in front of millions. But Sakura has learned over time that embracing mistakes is a necessary hurdle on the road to improvement for anyone, including the people at home. Sometimes I see comments on the internet where people judge an idol entirely based on one thing they do, and I always feel bad when I see how they get stressed out from that. When I see comments like that about me, I end up thinking, did I always used to be that bad? Was I not any good back then? But in reality, all those moments make up who I am. There's days when nothing works out no matter how hard you try, and others when you feel terrible and have no idea why and you can't do a single thing. But that's still a part of who we are, so isn't it better that we accept that and just try to do our best? I think therein lies the appeal of Sakura's story on Produce 48. People wanted to root for her not just because of her genuine effort, but because she willingly challenged the high bar of perfection set by the K-pop industry, despite being fully aware of her shortcomings. Her willingness to make mistakes and be critical towards herself highlighted how kind and professional she really was. She embodied the simple fact that what's important is the heart of an idol, not how many years they spend in the company dungeon. But how does she deal with criticism? People have been vocally critical of her since she came to Korea, a problem that has only compounded over time. Well, she says this. There's a 2-6-2 rule. 20% of people like you no matter what you do, 60% make a judgment call after seeing what you do, and 20% will hate you no matter what. So the way I want to see it is, whatever you do, don't listen to the people who hate you no matter what, and just show your hardworking side to the people who judge you fairly. You can't change what's already happened, but if you do your best with what you've got, you can turn those people's attention into support. Well, safe to say she did, because she got second place on Produce 48 and spent two and a half years in one of K-pop's most premier girl groups, then joined K-pop's biggest company in the lineup for one of K-pop's biggest girl groups again, and... Okay, I guess I shouldn't skip over that part. After Eyes 1, Sakura decided to spend one final month with HKT48 to say goodbye to her old community. She knew that as she matured, she wanted to show a new, stronger side of herself, which meant moving on. The Sakura Graduation documentary and the World Is My Oyster Le Seraphim documentary cover this era in detail, so I definitely recommend watching them. Links in the description. But the short of Sakura's motivations in joining Le Seraphim were... <laughs> I would really regret it if I chose the easy way forward. I don't want to feel like my shining past is all behind me. It might look like I used to shine brighter because everyone has a different perspective, but when I stop and think about it, I think I feel like I'm more mature now than ever before, so I choose to challenge myself with a more challenging path. And now being in La Seraphim has also given her the opportunity to support her members in a way she never has before. Being the oldest and most experienced in her group, she finds joy in helping people like Kazuha and Unche, members much younger than her who face challenges as they found themselves in a vastly new and different idol life. Now Sakura can find motivation in helping her members thrive, a stark contrast to her younger, competitive self. I used to have an individualistic side, and a lot of people mistook me for being cold. But now I'm more interested in looking after the other members than myself, and it's harder to watch them struggling with something than to struggle with it myself. As the oldest member, and the one with the most experience, I want to look after all of them. 
I try to tell the younger members to do what they want, and I'll watch. Because if they feel like they aren't allowed to say and do the small things they want repeatedly, then I'm worried they won't be able to speak up when it really matters. Despite focusing on improving her skills for so long, Sakura realized that her treatment of others was just as important as how she sang or danced. An idol with a sympathetic and genuine heart shines brightly to everyone. It makes her respected by not just her fans, but her colleagues. In another interview, she says, I think I was immature, self-centered, and only thinking of myself when I first debuted. But I learned there's certain things you should say and do to be considerate of others and build a good relationship the longer I've been an idol. I think a celebrity's abilities and talents are important, but even more important is what kind of person they are. If you're going to work together for a long time and make it enjoyable, the people you're working with have to want to work with you too. That's the kind of person I want to be. And that's the kind of group I want La Seraphim to be, too. Sakura, then, stands higher today in La Seraphim than she ever has before. She represents those who want their dreams to come true, despite the fact they don't see themselves as perfect or have any specialized training. Her mistakes have made her who she is, a role model to her fans and a mentor to her members. Her place in the industry is unprecedented, and that's why she's able to blossom. And alright, like I said, there's still so many good quotes that I couldn't get to that it's officially Miyawaki Sakura quote reading time. Most of these are from the Weverse magazine, so I recommend checking them out with the link in the description because it's a lot of interesting stuff. Oh, and if you have any interpretations of these quotes, please share them in the comments. <clears throat> a little while ago, I posted on Weverse my memo thinking I don't want to forget about the painful parts of the past. Looking back now, I went through a lot of rough times, but I can't remember them that well not so much overcoming them as just forgetting about them. Then I thought that might make my past self lonely, so I decided I still want to hang on to the memory of the hard times. Yeah, wow. Sakura views her past self as still her, someone worthy of remembering and respecting. That's pretty deep. Definitely one way to love yourself. I want to be with the other members forever, but I know the day might come when we can no longer be together. Everything has to come to an end someday, and I'm only human, so I can't keep performing on the stage forever. Who knows, I might even be going downhill already, so I have to cherish every single day. Even though this is the third time I've debuted, I don't even notice the time passing because I get to spend every single day doing the things I love, and looking forward to an even brighter future. This might be the first time I've ever heard a fourth generation idol talk about their group coming to an end, and even acknowledging the possibility of quote, going downhill already. But I like how she frames that as a reason to cherish every moment. It is the fleetingness of the cherry blossoms which make them so beautiful, or something like that. I used to think, will there still be people who remember the exact year, month, and day La Seraphim got first place on a music show 10, 20 years from now? Why do I have to feel these extremes of happiness and sadness? What does any of it matter? Success scares me, to be honest. Once you succeed, the next step is to do even better, and then I see my future self struggling. It even feels like my past self is tormenting me lately. But I keep racing forward, pushed ahead by my past self doing the same. What keeps me from stopping more than anything is the other members. If it were just me, I might think, this is good enough. But it's the five of us together, so I'm holding on to the hope that we can reach somewhere much, much higher. Now, this really intrigued me. In addition to mentioning her past and now future selves again, she talks about the fleetingness of K-pop stardom and accolades. That's something we really never hear about from idols. But I think it makes sense in her case. A lot of you are Sakura fans, but probably don't know all that much about what song she was in, or what she achieved within the AKB48 sphere 10 years ago. Being intimidated by all the effort you have and will go through to just achieve something that might be forgotten is an understandable fear. But Sakura has Chewon, Yunjin, Kazuha, and Unche now. She can fight for them too, and maybe achieve something together with them so unthinkable to us, so impactful, that it will make the world a truly different place. Now that's some food for thought. Haiting kura! Alright, I'll end on this final quote. In a 2021 Japanese interview with BIS Magazine, Sakura was asked what her strong point as an idol was. The fact that I also like idols? Because I too am a bit of an otaku. I like idols, and whenever I'm having a hard time at work, I watch videos of idols to cheer myself up. It's precisely because I like idols that I know how I want them to be. So there's a part of me that says, I'm so glad I'm an otaku.
Thanks for watching everyone. I somehow managed to cover the legendary Miyawaki Sakura. Tell me anything you learned in the comments. Oh, and big shout outs to my first patrons ever. If you also want to support the channel and get access to an exclusive behind the scenes commentary about making this video, check out the link to my Patreon in the description. Anyways, if you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe for more fun and insightful K-pop content, and I'll see you guys next time. Annyeong!